Hello everyone and welcome to a Good Vibes Gaming Discussion, a special one because Steve here got to see Kirby and the Forgotten Land in action. Ooh. I am so jealous. I did. And mm, he, he didn't get to go hands on <laughs> with it, but he did get to see it in action and that's more than any of us can really say outside of these trailers. Unfortunately, we don't have any footage of that. We just have to kind of go off of the trailer so we can't show any of you any of the new footage, but... I can pick Steve's brain, so uh, let's pick that brain. And just overall, right off the beginning, Steve, what do you think so far? What did that demo do for you? Uh, the, it hammered home for me that this is the first Kirby game that I really, truly must play. Like, I was excited seeing the trailers and seeing it in the direct, but uh, I got to sit down with some folks from the Treehouse, and they played through a section of the game for me while I got to ask them questions about stuff, and it was... Uh, it, it, it's better to see it like out of out of the context of a direct like v a lot of games are more impressive when nintendo presents them kind of packaged up uh this mm -hmm. is a game where once i saw just raw gameplay i was even more excited than i was before that's uh i want <laughs> it because the thing is it, it I will say from my own impressions, uh, from when i first saw kirby in the forgotten land did those initial analyses uh it's like okay it's Kirby in 3D. That seems to be the gimmick, but then they showed off mouthful mode and the way you could build up your town with the Waddle Dees. And uh, how much did they show off of those? Did you get to see more of mouthful mode? Did you get to see the building up of towns? So I, I didn't get to see Waddle Dee town at all. They didn't show it during oh, okay. my brief uh, eyes on preview, but uh, I did get to see plenty of mouthful mode. In fact, I saw a few things that Nintendo hasn't shown yet uh, publicly for mouthful mode so a few more mouthful modes <laughs> but uh yeah i got to see carby i got to see uh cone b i got to see vend b that's what i'm calling <laughs> i don't care uh nintendo's official name for these is uh let's see i think it's car mouth kirby vending mouth kirby which come on guys <laughs> but I, and, and cone you know they kirby. gotta go standard yeah uh. <laughs> yeah i i get it but carby was like right there for you it was right there. Just take the bait. But um, I did get to see him. I got to see some actual uh, car Carby. I'm just he's Carby. I got to see Carby gameplay, like what you actually do uh, in the world, how you solve puzzles as as Carby. It was really really cool. In fact, uh, as an attack, uh, Carmouth Kirby Carby has a, a boost, and and he kind of gets like you can see like flame going around the front of the hood as as he drives through stuff, and you can like knock over obstacles and like drift through enemies. It's it's really really cool. Uh, one of the things that Nintendo uh, didn't mention was that copy abilities in Mouthful Mode are separate. So by sucking up a car, you don't lose like sword. If you if you'd copied sword earlier on, you'll actually be Carby, but you'll be wearing a little link hat as you drive, which is really cool. It actually like flaps around in the breeze as, as Carby drives around. That little note confused me when I first saw that. I was like, are you sure about this? Because it technically isn't possible to suck up anything else when you already have an ability. So I guess it, it, that implies to me that mouthful mode is kind of automatic or you just have to touch the item do you can you confirm that like how do you interact with that even if you, if, even if you already have a, an ability so so you still suck up the the car but it's it's considered a new ability that is separate from kirby's copy ability so the way they described it and nintendo was intentionally like super vague about this but they said uh, that the game opens on planet pop star and that Kirby, through some circumstance they wouldn't tell me about, winds up on this planet. And that when Kirby arrives on this planet, Kirby discovers that he has this new mouthful mode ability. So it's like some separate ability that Kirby has gained on top of his copy ability. So it's, okay. it's like a new ability to to the character that, that he, he doesn't even seem to know how he got it when he gets it. This, this, this thing is just popping out powers as, as much as he can, as quickly as he can. It just happens. Yeah. It, it feels like. Does having a, an ability along with Mouthful Mode change anything? Like, can we expect a sword swipe out of the car as you're going along? Or is it just a hat 
from from what I saw, it's just a hat. So like you'll you'll still have the hat, so that when you disengage mouthful mode, you'll you'll be back with the copy ability you had before it. Uh, okay. But I didn't see any any special abilities used. Nintendo didn't confirm or deny that you could use them. Uh, I think they just want us to play the game and figure it out. But if I had to bet, right. I would say that it's just a hat. That makes sense. You know, you have to get through an obstacle and, you know, you don't want to lose the power. You got to carry the power to some other thing. It fits Kirby. So, yeah, I could I could see that being a thing. Um, are you allowed to talk about some of the uh, new mouthful modes that you saw? Uh, yeah, they didn't say I couldn't. Uh, okay. So let me see here. I want to I want to remember the, the I... one that stands out to me is Dome Mouth or Domi, yes. as you probably like Domi. to call him. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's Domi. But uh, so there was there was a spot in the world where we encountered a uh, hidden room and then you go up and there was just a dome sitting there and it looked like you couldn't do anything. Uh, but then the the treehouse person, you know, sucked up the dome and Kirby kind of latched onto the top of it. And it, uh, as a result, he looked like just like a, a little like flat bubble. <laughs> and uh, they tw- they rotated the analog stick, and Kirby would spin the top of the dome until it popped open. And then inside was a golden cage full of Waddledees for Kirby to rescue. Uh, it seems like Waddledees are kind of the uh, collectible. collectible. Yeah, like in this game, instead of collecting like power stars like you would in Mario or Shines, you, you collect Waddledees. You save Waddledees, and that seems to be how you measure your success. There's Waddledees hidden all throughout uh, all the levels, and that's probably the other big thing I got was that this is this is not like a big open world game. It's still a level based game. Uh, the way that the Treehouse described it to me is that. Uh, it has a an overworld map similar to the one found in like Super Mario 3D World. They didn't let me see it, but they said you know that instead of it's like been shown off a little bit in the trailers. So oh, okay, there's, cool. Yeah, it's, it, there's a little bit of it in the trailers, so we have seen a little bit of that. Um, but so so we kind of have an idea of kind of how the levels are. But you actually noted and I thankfully you gave me your notes so I can kind of pull from these and pick your brain. Um, <laughs> you mentioned that the overworld uh, each level has different missions with yes so so it, or is it like the still you're going through the same level and it's just like here's a checklist of missions that you need to do within it or do you pick a mission and the level kind of adapts around that mission right so so it was the first one you said it's not like it's okay. not like super mario 64 where you choose a star in the war and the level kind of subtly shifts this is just you have a list of missions and they're not all known to you some of them are just grayed out like oh hey there's definitely a mission here that'll net you another waddle d if you if you find it but it's up to you to figure out you know where that is and we we saw some of that um there was an instance where uh the treehouse person was playing as cone and there were cracks in the ground and so they would jump up and then they'd hit uh i think the b button and that would cause uh Kombi to do like a, a nose dive into the ground and it would shatter the the cracked spots. And uh, at one point, they found that they broke into the ground and found a hidden passage that took them. You know, there there was a ladder behind it, and they went up. And then on top of a building, they found a cage full of waddledees. And so that that was a uh, and that was one of the unknown missions uh, at that point. But it, it really just boils down to each mission. What they call is just uh, a path to find all the waddledees in that level. Okay, that that makes sense, and I, I like that. That it gives you a that indicates to me that it's going to be a little more hidden than what Kirby collectibles have been in the past. Because usually it's just like it's three per level or this many per level. Like here's a little thing, and there you go. But to have an actual mission listed for it, then yeah. it might be a little little more in, involved in order to find these things. So. Yeah, some of the, some of the stuff that I saw was really well hidden. Uh, like if you didn't know all of Kirby's abilities and you didn't know what he could do you wouldn't find them and I thought that that was really cool that some of them were you know it it, it especially helps when it's things like cracks or, or faults in the walls or the ground because the world is falling apart so you see that everywhere so it's not like you know you're walking through a pristine area and there's just a chunk taken out of a wall like the whole world is is messed up so you kind of have to you know I think it'll become 
more obvious as you play the game more and more but if you're coming in like the very first time and you and you're not aware that these types of things exist it would be easy to kind of gloss over it and say well you know it's it's just another piece of broken road or it's just a crumbling wall like i've seen a million of these um but they do have like on closer inspection you know an obvious look to them that that somebody who's been through it a couple times will will start to think oh i could probably use an ability there that makes sense that makes sense um Looking through your notes here, I also see that uh, there are two difficulty modes, uh, which you list as Wild Mode and Spring Breeze Mode, and the only real difference between the two is HP, it seems. Yeah, so so at the beginning of, of the uh, playthrough, they showed us that there were these two difficulties, and essentially what it boils down to is how sturdy Kirby is. Like, it doesn't change the amount of enemies Kirby faces, or even their durability, it's just how much punishment Kirby can take. Uh, and they said, you know, that if you're if you're used to the traditional kind of more easy uh, Kirby experiences, that Spring Breeze mode is more akin to that, and that Wild Spring mode or, or Wild mode is made with more seasoned players in mind, people that kind of want to amp up the challenge. Because I and they mentioned that they've heard that Kirby games are are you know kind of kind of been getting easier, you know, <laughs> and mm-hmm. so they they wanted to address that criticism. By giving wild mode, and and I saw the treehouse play through on wild mode, and I would say that the thing that impressed me was was not necessarily that it looked like a hard game because it still doesn't look like a very difficult game, uh, but that the encounters that I saw were were very uh, varied in the approach that you would need to take to them. I saw uh, the game had a a boss kind of early on and i would call him more of a mid boss than anything else uh his name was uh what was it it was like i a guy, see it was a guy oh, with like I... fur on his collar and he he had like a you know a traditional weapon uh i'm trying to remember his name his name's not super important but it was more of wild like edge a, Wild Edge, thank you, thank you. Thank, uh, yeah, I was like, I know you have it listed here. We're like, where is yeah, it? <laughs> I, like, where, I know I wrote it down, but I don't have time to look for it. Uh, Wild Edge was a traditional boss encounter where you really just need to have a copy ability and, and just attack him, like throw projectiles at him. Um, and there was, but later on in in the gameplay demo that I got, uh, I saw a an unnamed boss that was like a turtle. And the turtle was wearing a building instead of a shell. And Kirby could not damage it. Like, no matter what you did, you know, if you were fighting it traditionally, you couldn't damage it. Instead, what you had to do was you had to find a cone and go into mouthful mode with the cone and then get enough elevation to be able to, like, nosedive onto the building and break the whole building off of the turtle, which I was like, oh, that's really cool that they included, you know, it's not just spam projectiles for every fight. Like, you have to actually think and use the environment and Kirby's abilities to gain the upper hand in some of these battles, and I I really, really liked that. Yeah, it's more thoughtful uh, in in that way, which which is good to see. It's definitely good to see. Um... Just going through your other notes here, uh, you have the star coins are the primary currency. I'm guessing that's mainly used for the gotcha system and not like get well, get a hundred and you get uh, extra life or like so. How is, how is that handled? So the they didn't tell us a ton about the currency uh, and how it's used. Like Nintendo was purposely very coy about this. What I do know is that the evolutions for the copy abilities that they showed off previously uh, can be bought with star coins. Um, but that there's okay. other currencies involved in that. And Nintendo wouldn't tell me what those are. They would just say, yeah, there's other currencies that you'll need in order to evolve Kirby's copy abilities. Uh, the other thing is that I think you use star coins to rebuild Waddle D town, uh, because they mentioned that you, you have to like invest into rebuilding the town in order to unlock other features. Uh, for instance, there's a present code feature uh, available in the game where, you know, on social media, they'll put out a code and it'll get you some kind of reward. Uh, but you have to repair Waddle D town to a specific point to even be able to use those codes, which I thought was really cool. Um, but the gotcha system, uh, that you mentioned is, is something that I found really interesting, especially as someone who is not super invested in Kirby, uh, but is finding this game is wanting me to get into it. Uh, the gotcha system 
feels a lot like Smash trophies in that they they all provide like lore about the character that you get, but they're actually just collectibles that are scattered out in the world, like in levels, you'll just find little gotcha capsules. And then when you beat the level, it'll let you open them and it'll tell you who you got. Uh, I don't know if there okay. is a way to buy them. I would imagine that you probably could. I, in I detail, saw maybe. a gotcha machine in one of the trailers in one of the, in part of the town. And since you didn't show you Waddle D town, you wouldn't know about that if you hadn't seen the trailers. Yeah. Um, the, that, that's interesting to me that you can find them out in the world because that is very similar to, um, past games uh, like Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot where they had in those games stickers and keychains that you would find and they'd be kind of randomized like you have some super rare ones that are always this on the level but then you'd find random ones that would you know unlock this stuff but it was only ever the character you never got a little blurb about what that character was oh nice yeah these so, they, they yeah. specifically said that they feel like people that are not familiar with Kirby are going to get their get their first experience with the with the franchise in this game so they wanted to include lore to like get people up to speed on on who the characters are and what their significance is so it's really cool like i like it personally you know as someone who has had like a passing interest in kirby but hasn't really played a lot of it uh to be able to you know understand a bit better how these characters kind of fit into the to the grand uh narrative as it were <laughs> I just like seeing the cameos and I love always like you never know if you get a little extra nugget of, of lore, <laughs> which is surprisingly a thing in Kirby. But there you go. Um, not too much else to cover here from your demo. I we uh, do have kind of the obvious thing where you sit a note here that uh, first player is always Kirby. The second is always Waddle D. And uh, rather than the hug or the kiss from the 2D games, it's a high five now to share health. Yes, uh, and the weird thing is they didn't show it to us. They just mentioned oh, they it. Didn't. They were like, "Oh, the oh. high five to share health," and then they they didn't let me see it. So if you're if you're out there playing this game, just know that you can high five Waddle Dee to, to either take his health or give him some, which I think is really cool. Uh, I was I was a little bummed that uh, co op is is single switch only. I was hoping that they would include online for this, and I know that that's been known since before this, but just. I had to ask. I was like, is there any yeah. chance that we're getting online? And they're like, no, single switch only. So, uh, yeah, unfortunate. But the game looks really cool when you're playing it two player. Uh, Waddle D has this uh, really cool mechanic since he doesn't have like a copy ability, obviously, or anything like that. Uh, if you hold down the B button, you can charge it and Waddle D will kind of spin his spear above his head like a helicopter and go up in the air and then he'll rain down a bunch of spears and you can actually target like people out in the distance with it too, uh, which I thought was a really cool uh, way to uh, have him part of the action. The other thing that's really cool is that when you go into mouthful mode, uh, specifically when you become Carby, Waddle Dee hops on the back and like holds on for his life. And you, and you drive around with Waddle Dee just hugging the back of the car. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. That is That is the best. Oh, God, I, I love the cuteness of this series. Uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like the last thing you really got to see uh, from this demo is uh, the gorilla boss that we've seen quite a few times in the trailer is Gormondo. Yes. Um, any, any cool gimmicks with him, like the turtle boss or just... Uh, sort of a standard uh, his, fight. his was a bit more straightforward. So you get uh, the, they kind of set up like a few copy abilities that are just out there that you can take before you fight uh, him. The treehouse, I believe, opted for ice with with Goromondo because there was like a choice of sword, bomb or ice. And they were just kind of mm -hmm. like hanging out in a case and you could just pick one and take it. Um it, and the treehouse tried that. We we got to see all three of those. Those were like the three main copy abilities they showed us. Were you know, and uh, those none of those are new. So uh, we didn't get. No, to see, they, like, they the, didn't. They didn't show our new ranger or. Um, yeah, we oh, didn't, I'm blanking on the other one, but yeah, <laughs> we didn't get to see Kirby with a gun or anything. But um, it was cool to see like ice being used against him. It was very high speed, but it was it was what I'd call a pretty standard boss encounter. I was more impressed with how it began. Uh, you're, you're literally walking through like a dilapidated building and there's, there's windows looking out into like a vast open space. And as you go through, eventually 
you catch Goramondo's eye. Like, he just happens to be walking by, and he, he looks in the building and sees you and, like, just reaches in and grabs Kirby, and he's, like, poking at him, and Kirby's deforming and, and <laughs> trying to stretch him out. And, and then uh, he, he, you know, Kirby gets free, and, and the two of them tussle, and, and uh doesn't end very well for Goramondo. He's not a very tough boss, but... Uh, Nintendo did mention, now I don't know if they've said this before, but he was one of the leaders of what they call the Beast Pack. And the Beast yes. Pack is like the primary antagonist group in this game. Um, and I, I, I'll be curious to see if that's more of like a, a Brutals situation from Odyssey, where it's like they might be like a smaller face to a much larger problem, which is what I'm guessing. Um, Nintendo also would not answer if this planet was Earth. Uh, someone, someone in my session asked if this was meant to be like Earth in the future because of, you know, I mean, there's some obvious stuff shows civilization was there. There were shopping malls, yeah. stuff like that. It, there's also the Earth kind of was a thing in Kirby 64 with Shiver Star, Shiver Star where it, it, the planet itself was Earth just frozen over and you went through a mall. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't think you played 64 before. No. So there, yeah. That, I think that's why people were like, ooh, could this be a return to that sort of thing? I don't think so, to be honest. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. They they implied, and of course this is this might just be you know them trying to get us on the hook to play the game, but they implied that that, that we may peel back that mystery and discover what planet we're on over the course of the game. Which, I mean, to an extent that makes sense because they did describe it as like Kirby just arrives here and doesn't know how he got here. So I imagine part of that is going to be getting back to Planet Popstar, and to do that you probably have to figure out where you are. So uh, true. Uh, from a lore standpoint, this seems to be a really interesting premise. I, I think that, you know, I, I'm already in it for the gameplay. The gameplay looks fantastic. It runs perfectly smooth. Didn't see any hitches, hiccups, anything of the sort. And, you know, there's there's the cool story implications of just, I like the mystery aspect of it. So I'm, I, I went into this already excited and came out of it like... I wanted Nintendo to send a review copy right now. I need to play this. I was like, please just get this in our hands. Like, I yeah. have to try this. I, w I want it. I want it. But fortunately, um, there is a demo, <laughs> which yeah. I I think is out now. Yeah, as, as of, of this, it's as a of this release. Iffy. As of the publication of this video, uh, the demo might be out. So if you've played it, you should let us know in the comments what you think about it because we haven't played it yet. Like, Nintendo didn't come out. As of this recording. Demo. Yeah. As of this well, recording, we haven't played it. If, if I plan on streaming it, it let's live, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> if this guy has streamed it already, then we've played it. If he hasn't, we haven't. So it, it'll and be hey, interesting to see. I mean, it, it's a good idea, I think, to put out a demo. I, I think so, too. So. I think that Nintendo probably knows that they, from a brand recognition standpoint, when when compared to their bigger uh, AAA franchises, they probably know that Kirby needs needs a little boost. And, I mean, if Samus needs a demo, Kirby needs a demo. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, I, I'd, I'd say Kirby's a little bit better known than Samus. Um, yeah, I, that's he's fair. Strict, he's distinctly B-plus tier in Nintendo canon, I'd say. As yeah. far as recognition, and I think but. I think it's I think this could be the boost he needs to get into Nintendo's you know uh, main roster as it were like their A team because it, it definitely mm -hmm. feels like an A team level effort. It doesn't feel like Nintendo has skimped on this at all. It feels like this was, you know, I I would I would go as far as to say after having seen it, I would be okay if this was the stand in for Mario. Like we keep comparing 2022 to 2017. I think that this will be a suitable stand-in for Mario Odyssey, assuming we don't see a 3D Mario this year. This Kirby game wow. looks good enough to fill Odyssey's shoes. That's impressive to say. <laughs> that that is. Hmm. I'm 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 curious. I am very curious now to try it out and see if I end up agreeing, because nice. I do love my love me some Kirby, but I've never put in the same rankings as Mario. It's just really fun in general. Yeah. Yeah, I would so. say this is the first time that I feel like like Kirby Kirby is playing in the big leagues with this game. I'm 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 there. You know, if you told me <laughs> two years ago that I would be that Kirby would be one of the my most anticipated games in any year, I'd be like, yeah, you're lying. <laughs> but uh, this this is it. Like, I'm I'm very excited for this. I would say that I'm looking forward to this more 
than anything uh, that we have solid release dates for. I, I mean, I would go as far as to say I'm more excited for this based on what I've seen of Splatoon 3 than that even. And I love Splatoon. Wow. Uh, I think the only game that I could say from Nintendo that I've got more hype for would be Breath of the Wild 2. But that's, I mean, that's Zelda. Like, like, yeah, it's Zelda. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to compare to that. But, uh, well, any other things, anything else you want to say about uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land and, and your time seeing I, it? The, the last thing I want to say is if you're like me and Kirby has not appealed to you in the past, do not let that blind you. Like, don't let that dissuade you from taking a look at this game. This game is absolutely worth a look, whether you're a Kirby fan or not. Because I probably would have told you six months ago that I wasn't a Kirby fan, and now, now I'm there this is this is kirby's like rift apart moment this is the game that will take people that aren't into the franchise and suddenly get them wanting to play every previous game so do yourself a favor take a look the demo should be out now it's free you got no reason not to try it i know i'm excited and uh yeah here's here's oh here's hoping it lives up to those expectations but for now I believe that believe that covers it for our Kirby and the Forgotten Land preview discussion. Thank you so much, Steve, for giving your thoughts, and thank all thanks to all of you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon at Patreon.com/GVGaming. But even just subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell helps us a ton. Look forward to the review, whether it's uh, we get it early or not. I will be reviewing that thing. You, I can guarantee you that. So uh, good times all around. And until next time, bye.